In the early 2000s, the Japanese Cartoon Network ran a series of locally produced ad bumpers for their currently airing programming. There is something interesting about this Japanese approach to Western animation. The character design, staging and posing are all nailed in the original style. The animation is comedic and dynamic, and overall they sometimes manage to feel more alive than many of the original shows. But the first time I saw these, something just didn't feel quite right. Some nagging feeling of alienation at what I was seeing. And it was only very recently that I was able to pinpoint exactly what it was. The lip sync. Despite every other aspect trying to mimic the style of Western animation, the lip sync was firmly Japanese. Merely lip flaps moving up and down, loosely matching the dialogue. And while I've become fairly used to this quirk within anime, seeing characters from Billy and Mandy and Cow and Chicken speak in this style was just... weird. Why is that? It's no secret that the lip sync in anime is far less accurate in matching the dialogue when compared to Western animation. It is seen as one of the cornerstones of animated productions in the West. Broadly speaking, of course. There is nary an English speaking animation guide that doesn't include a huge diagram of all the possible mouth shapes, and even works that heavily lean on limited animation for the sake of a joke have entire departments dedicated to making sure the lip sync is pinpoint perfect. Anime, on the other hand, tends to take a far less hands-on approach. I don't know why I did this. A typical anime scene will feature merely three shapes. Closed, half open, and fully open. Occasionally, a particularly important cut or sequence may have more accurate lip movements. For example, a very poignant line of dialogue. <laughs> Or trying to show a character singing. But even these instances tend to be far more reserved than their rubbery Western counterparts. On the surface, the reason as for why is fairly common knowledge. In Western productions, the dialogue is recorded first, and then the lip movements are created to match. Whereas historically and traditionally, Japanese animation recorded the dialogue after the animation was completed, or at the very least, the animatic. There does seem to be a little bit of a shift recently, and some anime productions match the lip flaps to the dialogue later, but even in these instances, it's still mainly those three mouth shapes. And as for why, most people chalk it up to the old budget chestnut. An average episode of a Western animated production takes anywhere between six months to a year to complete, versus the mere three to four months of your average TV anime production. There are some other considerations to doing it this method, such as giving the voice actors more freedom to ad-lib, but for the most part, it's simply that Accurate lip sync takes a considerable amount of time and resources. And in the face of that resource slash manpower difference, most anime productions simply don't make it a priority. And some people simply wash their hands of it at that and say, yep, that's why, that's, uh, that's the reason, this is the reason, there's no more, no more things to consider. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what many people don't really seem to consider further is, why isn't it a priority? Well, I have a theory and it has to do with some fundamental differences between the English and Japanese languages. Oh, I didn't realize I used that shot twice. <laughs> some of the features of the Japanese language are fairly common knowledge. Uh, for example, the difficulty of Japanese speakers differentiating R and L sounds, or that there is a complex series of honorifics and polite language depending on who you're talking to. But one aspect that isn't common knowledge is how little the lips move in Japanese. In isolation, Japanese only has five vowels and 15 consonants. <laughs> And even considering that, all the ways that these sounds are combined in speech still makes for a language that's just as complex and detailed and nuanced as any other, the fact of the matter is there's simply far, far fewer sounds in Japanese when compared to English. In a basic sense, I think it comes down to a concept called lip rounding, also known as labialization to nerds. This refers to how much the lips pucker in or out when speaking. 
you know what? I'm not actually an uh, expert on this subject. I'm going to let uh, this reincarnation of famous 13th century Zen master explain it. He can do it better than I can. Okay, here we go. In Japanese, there is little to no lip rounding or spreading. Dr. Vance, citing Someda, further citing Hattori, goes as far as to say that in Japanese, the lips play almost no active role in pronunciation. The best way to illustrate this idea is by comparing the English and Japanese vowels U and U. Let's start with the English word U. As you'll notice, when I say U, my lips become rounded and protrude forward significantly. U. However, if we look at the Japanese U or U, we can see that this doesn't occur despite U being the most rounded vowel in Japanese. U. Compare back to back. U. 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 <laughs> oh, thank you, Senpai. Yes, yes, yeah. Lip rounding actually tends to be one of the many factors in having a foreign accent when you speak another language. Commonly, when native English speakers try to speak Japanese, they tend to subconsciously use English lip rounding, and so the words sound strange. And vice versa, for Japanese speakers trying to speak English, they don't move their lips enough. So this is not necessarily just a symptom of tight production deadlines or scheduling conflict or lack of resources or whatever you want to call it. A neuroimaging study led by Professor Kaoru Sekiyama at Kumamoto University found conclusive evidence that in face-to-face -face conversation, native speakers of Japanese don't rely on lip reading to anywhere near the same level as a native English speaker. According to the study, when natural speech is paired with lip movement, native English speakers focus their gaze on a speaker's lips, even before the emergence of any sound. In contrast, the gaze of native Japanese speakers is not as fixed. This has some far-reaching consequences for native Japanese, to the point of some audiovisual material for language learning being pretty much useless. Professor Sekiyama even speculates that there may be unique ways in which Japanese people process audio information. So, when you take all of that into consideration and think about how anime is produced as a whole, you can start to see why lip sync isn't really a priority. In certain comedic anime, the mouth shape can distort well beyond the point of even some western animation, sometimes even taking up half the face. But this anime comedic approach more has to do with what mouth shapes are even appropriate to exaggerate in the first place. The dictionary form of every Japanese verb ends with this uh, and despite it being the most rounded vowel in Japanese, they use the same mouth shape as everything else because the difference isn't that big. Because in reality, U is not the same as our English U or U sounds. And to the Japanese layman, they're virtually indistinguishable in terms of lip formation. To all the other vowels, I mean. It's highlighted for the sake of delivery when it needs to be. But that's exactly what it is. Highlighting. Even in a film like Akira, well known at the time for recording the dialogue before the animation was completed, has this phenomenon. Despite how accurate the movement of the lip flaps is to the dialogue of the scene, for the most part it's still just very well timed opening and closing of the mouth. <laughs> Hiromatsu Tadashi, an animator in the film, revealed on Twitter that they only used a total of seven mouth shapes when working on the film, something which he and the other staff took oh, quite a bit of time to get used to. And though he says it led him to think more carefully about how to use lip sync for those punctuated shots in his future productions, he does say this very interesting aside. You should be careful, however, as overdoing lip sync in Japanese can even make it feel uncomfortable. Animation is like a house. It's a weird tangent, I know, but just 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 run with me, okay? Imagine your friend is coming over to your house in 30 minutes, and you need to tidy up. If you had a full day, maybe you would make the whole house spotless on principle alone. But the reality is you're strapped for time. 
So you need to think more carefully about what is your friend going to see? If you were going to just shoot the shit in your living room, that would receive due attention. You would sweep, dust, vacuum, put your beer cans and Chinese tank out away, take down your anime posters because this friend doesn't really know your power level and you don't really want to break the friendship yet. However, if you were going to just chill on the veranda, you'd probably only give the living room enough of a once-over to make sure there was a clear path to go outside. The same principle applies to animation. Every animator in the world would probably love to make every shot this beautifully, perfectly lip-synced character piece on ones as everything's fluid and dancing and moving through 3D space and everyone's singing and dancing and doing a big circle jerk. But unfortunately, most animators live in the real world. And in the real world, you're always juggling a million things and perpetually a couple weeks away from the deadline. So if you're an animator from a culture that subconsciously seeks out lip-reading for clarity, that is going to be a priority. And if you're from one that really doesn't, your precious time is better spent animating something else. It all depends on what you expect your audience to be looking at.